my attempt at a bat sound. Gen 4 time. You know Cyrus, the cool guy, the Giga Chad himself? Oh man, I mean honestly, back when this came out, I had a dangerously low threshold of he's so edgy, he's so cool! I was everything wrong with the 2000s. Well, either way, Cyrus is definitely the evilest of villains in Pokemon. However, his great goal is still rather lackluster. I mean, oh, I want to blow up the galaxy because I was amused as a kid. Look how cool I am. Oh boy, nihilism is cool. Wait, that's, that's a funny idea, being excited about nihilism. <laughs> But his whole shtick is that friendship and relationships are not cool. They are no good. Emotions are no good. The good is not worth the bad when it comes to the trades off of being human. Ooh. And this is exactly the problem I have. If he truly, truly believed this one time Power Rangers villain of a plot. If he truly absolutely believed that, he would not have a Crobat. Because last I checked, which was five seconds ago, Golbat evolves into Crobat with friendship. It is a friendship evolution, which is exactly the opposite of Cyrus's whole nihilism viewpoint on life. If he truly only sees Pokemon as tools, a means to an end, and that friendship is meaningless and nothing, why then would this Pokemon of his evolve with him as the trainer? Well, that's the question we're answering on this episode of Noggin. How does Cyrus have a Crobat? So, I have this problem about me on the internet. Uh, it's pretty personal, but it's time that you hear about it. I am losing my battle against password management. And I'm not kidding. I feel like every single time I need to log into certain accounts, I have to make a new password. And don't even get me started on the sites that force you to change your password every six months. There are only so many numbers! Oh, the struggle! I'm too old for this! But thankfully, today's sponsor has me covered. That's right, the ultimate in password technology services. Say goodbye to the days of looking and digging for hours through text documents and sticky notes for that one password, because NordPass keeps them all safe and encrypted. Credit card info too. It's a a big step up in security. I mean, it even has phishing protection services, scanning for specific types of password and credit card information scams, and it generates complex passwords for you too. Plus, it lets you safely share passwords too, to give friends access to things like eh, premium video streaming accounts. <clears throat> and best of all, if you use the coupon code NOGGIN, you get 70% off of a two-year premium plan with an added month for free. So that's over two years of protection at 70% off. So stay safe out there with NordPass. Link below. So, Cyrus's Golbat evolves into a Crobat. Uh, let's first figure out how exactly this evolution works. So you have yourself a Golbat, which was a Zubat to begin with. But no one loves Zubat, which is why when it's a Golbat, it starts to get excited. Maybe friendly even. It develops eyes because it's finally hanging out outside of caves with you. And you take care of it, making sure it doesn't faint often because you care about it and... You give it tasty treats because you care about it and it starts building a bond with you because you care about it. It's a bond of friendship. So eventually it evolves because it platonically loves you so much. Mechanically speaking, the max friendship, which is also known as happiness by the way, in game is 255 and you typically need at least 220 happiness points for a Pokemon that requires friendship to evolve. Ways to raise the friendship level are variable. They kind of change a little bit from game to game, but some are pretty constant. Use them well. Give them tasty treats and not gross medicine. Basic stuff. But how can you numerically categorize what friendship is? Friendship, in the case of these Pokemon games, at least according to its Japanese name, is more so Natsukido, or the degree of emotional attachment. But then, in Generation 2, it's also referred to as loyalty and it is also synonymous with happiness. They, they really aren't making this easy. It is, however, not to be confused with the Gen 6 mechanic known as affection. Affection, also known in Japanese as closeness, 
I guess is different enough from friendship slash loyalty slash emotional bondedness. Which is weird, but I guess it kind of makes sense Like if you, if you think about it. You can totally be friends with people, but not really close or affectionate. So I guess that helps the whole loyalty theory I've been dropping hints to here. The Crobat isn't technically fond of this edgy, nihilistic, cringe lord of a man, but it is loyal. Instead of being a good friend, Gulbat sees him as a great ally due to his power as a trainer. And so evolves. You can think of it sort of like the Mythbusters or Penn and Teller. According to interviews, they aren't actually friends at all, but as professionals, they see the value in being allies and having loyalty towards one another. It's the same logic. Yet, nihilism makes this hard because if Cyrus was a true nihilist, he would believe in nothing and have no allegiances and no purpose other than perhaps an impulse to destroy, which we do sort of see. He specifically states, Unlike you trainers, I do not make Pokemon my friends or partners. Right after you beat him. However, the next time you see him after that, his Golbat has evolved into a Crobat. Is it possible he saw the error in his ways after he witnessed your incredible teamwork with your bond of friendship with all your Pokemon? I mean, in Platinum, he actually blames his loss on your closeness to your Pokémon. So, maybe his eyes opened a tad. And that's why in the manga, they bleed so much. The manga's dark. Well, the second time you meet, he really still seems destructive with his whole kill the universe sort of deal, so I'd think not. There isn't any second chance he gives Pokémon or emotions. He's dead set on the destruction of the world and recreation without the things he hates. <sighs> like one, how childish. Uh, yeah, I don't like broccoli, so I'm gonna kill everyone and make a universe where kids hate green bell peppers instead of broccoli. Ooh. Or, well, broccoli doesn't exist. That would make more sense. Anyways, philosophy aside, we still have this oddity. The bat. What would make it like or love this dumb, edgy guy? I mean, he literally wants to blow up the world, Crobat. The world. You are a part of the world, stupid. And I mean, Cyrus sort of keeps his exact motives a secret from the rest of Team Galactic until the very end, but you'd think his own Pokémon would pick up on that since they're always with him, even in private. I mean, I guess the Golbat could just really want the same end of the world too. Maybe the Golbat turning into a Crobat, maybe it... It too is all doom and gloom and mid-2000s edge. Stockholm Syndrome also comes to mind. The name comes from the Stockholm incident that took place in Stockholm, Sweden, where a bank robbery turned dangerous. The robbers took hostages. However, in typical police fashion, they took too long to do anything, which led to many of the hostages talking and learning more about their captors. In this brief stint, they became sympathetic with their plight, typically no longer hating or fearing their captors. Instead, they feel a connection to them. They relate. Some even go as far as defending them after the event. Many of the captives also wouldn't testify against them, even in court. And sometimes this can even lead to feelings of friendship or even love for your captors. It's an odd and interesting psychological conundrum. So could that be what happened to this Golbat turned Crobat? It's trapped with Cyrus against its will. And it's come to see Cyrus as a friend because of Stockholm Syndrome. And why do people do this? What are the, what are the reasonings? And why is the inverse called Lima? That's almost Ligma. Good lord, the future is gonna suck. I mean, look at all of the updog. Some psychiatrists believe that this syndrome is the body's way of survival. Instead of flight or fight, the body goes into a freeze and appease mode. It also prevents future trauma by blocking out the memories of abuse. It actually also happens with children when they are being abused by a parent. 
they can still form a loving attachment to their parent. It's a defense mechanism against the pain. The dissociation prevents them from fully realizing what has happened. However, with Stockholm Syndrome, it's typically a life and death situation. Those who have studied the syndrome believe this odd bond is created when a captor threatens a captive's life, waits and thinks about it, and then chooses not to kill the captive. This then means that the captive might feel relief at the removal of the death threat. And this is then altered by our dumb monkey brains into a feeling of gratitude toward the captor for giving you your life back. Essentially, if you were kidnapped by a person and they threatened your life away, they took away your prospective future. They're gonna, ooh, they're gonna kill you. And then they give you your life back. They drop their weapon. Dumb monkey brain says, thank you. Thank you for not killing me. You gave me my life back. Everything in my life that I do from now on is thanks to you giving me my life back, even though you were the whole reason it was threatened in the first place, but dumb monkey brain. So dumb that sometimes the opposite thing happens too, where the captors begin to feel sympathy and friendshipy, lovey feelings for their captives. Or the other way, where the captives just straight up hate their captors maximum style forever, which might really be the normal response in the real world that we should do more often. Uh, but that doesn't make for as good of movies, I guess. But back to Pokemon, is Golbat's fear causing it to think it's in a happy relationship with Cyrus? Well, that could be. But that specifically is not called Stockholm Syndrome. Typically, that only is for hostage situations. No, the bat in this case isn't under Stockholm, but something like it, possibly. It relates to Fairbairn's, that's a great name. It relates to Fairbairn's object relationship idea, which is the opposite of Freud's drive ideology. It was a big upset in the psychologist fandom if I've ever seen one. Basically, it comes down to explaining how children who are abused can still love their abusive parents or whoever is abusing them. In Fairbairn's model, the need of the child for a positive parent is so intense that the deprived child creates a good parent out of fantasy and hope. Because humans need hope to live. And I guess so do bats. I mean, most Pokemon show levels of intelligence much higher than most animals, so sure, why not? It could be simply loyalty, but this is some extremely one-sided loyalty, Crobat, you stupid. Nihilistic people in perfect practice don't have loyalty, so there's no real bond forming. However, the Golbat could still have loyalty to him. Perhaps the Golbat is also a nihilist? They, they see themselves as a mutual ally because they both have the same opinions of the universe. This is all so dumb. Realistically, Game Freak probably just forgot when they decided Crobat was gonna be one of Cyrus's mon, you know? Or they wanted to show that Cyrus has a soft side because no human is purely... edge... garbage... But what do you think? Is this bat trying to make its life and family work by just ignoring all of the terrible things and loving its trainer no matter what? Like a hostage? Or is it simply blindly loyal to its trainer? Or is it as simple as it too wants the death of the universe? I mean, bats are spooky and villainous in all sorts of media, bleh. Uh, so I guess that theory works too. Well, let me know down below. And until next time, never stop using your noggin like this bat because it's stupid.